Greetings, everyone. This is Rock and Roll Spot Connection. What's another some of the Trans Metropolitan series of the Retro Comic Review? We'll be covering Volume 5, Lonely City. So, the, to be perfect, these really aren't a, it's really a review series, much as run down, going over an older comic. <clears throat> but, well, my dumbass called it a review, a review series initially, so... Oops. So, where we left off at the end of Volume 4? The Smiler was elected president. And... He told... Spider that... Yeah. Messing with Spider was going to... Destroying Spider Jerusalem was going to be his num one of his top priorities. Because he can. And so... We begin. We get a one-shot she called Here to Go. Um, it's raining. The filthy assistants are. I would appear to. are apparently a, either an escort server or a strip club. Guys. But it's mostly a. Uh, a column. I love the city in the rain. The last of the spring rains is here. Soft on light wind. Sort of spring breeze that ruffles your hair like a playful sister. If you've got hair. People on the streets stop now to open their mouths, drink it down, cold and clean and fresh. I couldn't do that when I was a kid. The rain was poison. We'd hide from it, cover our faces as if we were facing a firestorm, like some bastard god was pissing acid on us. Not that I'd blame him. Now I watch it running over girls' chins, making their skin glisten like pure and elegantly worked crystal. Down on the street, phone... Phone ports, sidewalk screens, and road control arches are made new again by the water. And children lead wonderfully unbelieving old women by the hand into the rain. I remember first learning about death quite vividly. Spider then explains how uh, he learned about death by the death of his grandfather, his mother explaining it to him. He was gone, and he wasn't coming back. And he said, wait, hold up. Basically, you went through all the trouble of conceiving me, giving birth to me, and raising me, and feeding me, and clothing me, and whipping me, whipping him from time to time, making him live in a house that was freezing cold all the time. And, there's, and then... After going through all life, there's death. And he goes on talking about death. Brings up the tale of Mad Radu Gumbeer. Bus a bu old bus driver back in the day. He drove, he drove the Bedford Han Hansworth run. The only man who drove that run. He's a one man arsenal. Man could reduce you to a smear of protein he, even when they missing his entire top three layers of skin. Which was how he killed the butchers of Spring Corner when they ambushed his bus. Rod all the passengers and tortured him for the coat of go to the on bus fare safe and one day he accidentally hit a nun with his bus and so 
that was that. Spider then tells the story of a young girl misses her brother. Okay. Goes up. Explains that uh, her mother was a mad religious domestic terrorist who ruled by guilt and fear. Her oldest brother was a half bright thing well on his way to violent mar monsterdom. And her father was a ghost in an armchair, silent and substantial. Her other older brother was kind. Let's just say that, how a, and I'll just simply say that the details of his kindness really can't be repeated on this video. And just leave it at that. However, eventually the brother drove off in front of a train. Left all kinds of human wreckage behind. Turns out that the episode, the issue has largely been Spider being interviewed. When the interview is over, the interviewer turns to, to Yelena and starts trying to talk to her. Yelena asks for the fee, but uh, to which you know, explains there's a fee for Mister Jerusalem's thoughts. She's, Yelena then calls for Shannon when it seems like the guy's not going to pay, and well. She comes out of the club, and that's where the issue ends. Next up, we've got 21 Days in the City. It's another column. My name is Spider Jerusalem. I'm the most beloved man in this city. I am a journalist. I write a column for a newspaper called The Word entitled I Hate It Here. Because I do. I hate it, and I hate you. And you love me for it. That's the way it works. If you argue with the way it works, I'll kick you off the top of your head off the top of your head and shit on your living brain and you will love me for it. Thank God for me. No, it's kick off the top, not kick you off the top of your head. The city changes its makeup. Its foundation's gone scabby. Lipstick kissed off, mascara run down its face. Down come the beast's colors, all gray and doomed. Their bite and bluster all dried up and blown down, rustling autumn streets. And everywhere, blooming, the Smiler's colors, a blaze of victory bouquets across all across the city. First he screws the city, then he buys her a new dress. Lovely. Maybe we should count ourselves lucky he didn't just wipe his, himself on, on our knee and toss five bucks out of the bed. She doesn't brush her hair. His hair is still dewy with droplets from the shower. Their eyes, too used to, use to half-light, get half-burned out by the sunshine. They groan, lean on each other, laugh themselves. Share his last year in front of the hotel, waiting for a cab. Or perhaps two. I spent last night sniff sniffling cat urine. The cat pissed in some mystery cesspool she keeps somewhere in the apartment that I have yet to locate. I lay there, cat urine festering in my twitching nostrils, listening to both my assistants ha having sex with near-brain-dead teenagers they picked up at some, at some bar over in West Egg. For nine hours and twenty-seven minutes. Oof. Apparently these are all slice of life column pieces. Um, the last one detailed uh, a couple sitting in front of a hotel. Seen there. Next one detailing back. I'm doing mechanics, he says, fingers tapping an unconscious urgency on the sharp edges of a credit card-sized AI computer brain. Some kind of servant mind you find in your, in your maker, one that comes with the standard chemical scanning gear that checks your food as fit for consumption. Some bastard here is selling mechanics, and he wants some. Not needs, not yet. Mechanics is, at least begins as, a drug. One new enough that we haven't yet developed a dictionary resistance to it. A drug whose chemical code is also machine code. Make the AI card scan the drug, do the drug yourself, and you and the machine intelligence both get good and fucked up. The drug creates a connection between your mind and the AI. The AI breaks into your head and starts messing around with your DNA. Move a human chemical here, draw some more there, and human tissue becomes mineral water. 
the drum mechanics, the high passes, the mechanics remain. Next up we have Mateo. Mateo bought himself a new set of genitals today. He's very proud of them. They were made by the Uruguayan firm known for the relatively and reliability and sensitivity of their product. They're also known for having their products built by children working in dangerous conditions earning less than a dollar a month. That doesn't bother Mateo. Oh no. Mateo's got the genitals he always wanted now. They're exactly like the genitals he used to have, only with a mini disc player. Then you've got this, which is actually kind of nice. Sometimes this place just stops and hits you in the eyes. I'm on a train to Venetian End and to cover the intestine rinsing competition at the public sinks there, passing through the, through the western lakes. Sunny day, trout and salmon blasting through the chemical, chemicals and rivers that connect the lakes to each other, the channels and rivers that connect the lakes to each other, and the sea. And then I see a dolphin. Then I see a tent, someone wearing dolphin animal traits for a weekend, and for a moment there, I don't have any words. We get him, we get Spider sitting in a park, surrounded by people. And when the sun falls down on the city, it's transformed. It blooms again. It's impossible blazes of a million colors you've forgotten that even existed. Winter has been here so long, it wakes me, shakes me from the gray I've been living in, reminds me why I'm alive, why I'm here, why I do what I do. My filthy assistants disagree, and I have to force them blinking and cursing into the light as if prodding them into walking the plank. Which. Which that also warms me, as if the sun were in my belly. We get a little bit about uh, the merchandising of uh, Spider Jerusalem. My editor, Mitchell Royce, makes me attend a media exploitation meeting at the offices of the Word. The crappiest rag you currently have slowly dissolving in your hands. It does not go well. I have shown magical truth-saying bastard Spidey animated versions of my columns in the manner of Japanese cartoons. I am shit. I am shown enough useless shit to make shelters for every war refugee in Western Europe, England. I am forced to re remonstrate physically with the media rep until Roy stuns me with wads of royalty money. And then there's uh, Apparently, there's also a movement, and at this point in the the uh, timeline of uh, called Right Love, which is how do I put this? Utterly abhorrent. Uh, yeah, I'm not reading that bit of column there. Next, we've got uh, Spider as Cap as Captain Ahab. Which, well, to be fair, I think you guys need to see that one to believe it. My dreams come true. A strain of intelligent sociopathic dog is resident in the dank sewers of Hillbury Depth, northeast of the Fourth Canal Terminus. These criminal vermin have, terror have terrorized the innocent people, there, the decent people there so badly and have bred so prodigiously that Civic Center is preventing, for only the third time in living memory, a cull. Smart or not, dogs have no rights. I ponder this awful, searing injustice as I follow my volunteer callmaster pass and assemble my arsenal. Sometimes, life is sweet. Then, uh, Spider revisits his old neighborhood. It. Calling it a shithole would be insulting to shitholes everywhere, I would say. Apparently, he, whenever he comes back to the neighborhood, he always does wonder who got out. We've got Spider shopping. I mean, he loves shopping. Nothing pleases him more than wandering through a good market's aisles. His gun tapping musically on, on the cart's steel. Stungray is bumming his leg companionably. Spiced seahorses in brine. Fresh chin heads on ice along with the salmon, manatee, and whale. Powdered children from Ireland mixed up in a jug of vodka for those summer days on the balcony. What a time to be alive. When delicacies from all over the world, some only half imagined, are there to be had on a nearby shelf. I had one of those weird cross lines the other day, the ones that connect you to Mars. 
Guess you get something to do with the revolutionary faction on Pylon 9, who most people are certain are only rebelling because they feel they really ought to. It's a cultural expectation. I ended up having phone sex with a nominal, fe nominal female who had a sequence of, fil of filtration pipes, vacuum seals, and musical valves instead of a mouth. Send me a picture later, though, and she had pretty lips. I'm oddly depressed. Listen to Filthy Assistance having wild fantasy at steroid monkey sex again last, last night. And finally, we have Spider looking down from his balcony. I live behind a wall so high it gets more difficult each day to see over it. When I first returned to the streets of the city, I was put in a, home, in a hopeless shithole. Once I'd made the words some money, I got, I got the movie to Pupin Grove, which was nicer. It filled with people who were, something, who were something in media. That place turned out to be insecure, and I was moved to expensive, safe Chase Square. And then I wrote the Josh Free story. They set me up in a, an ultra-exclusive Pur, Puritan muse here. And now I can't see the street anymore. We had a shot of a uh, spider sitting on a dumpster, and some people pass out in front of it. Another guy taking what appears to be a bong hit to, off to the side. You ever want to see someone's head on fire just to see what it looks like? You ever stand on the street and think to yourself, I could make that nun go blind just by giving her a kiss. You ever lay out plans for stitching babies and stray cats into a perfect new human? You ever stand naked surrounded by people who want your gleaming sperm, squirting frankincense, soma, and testosterone for every pore? If so, then you're the bastard who stole my drugs Friday night, and I'll find you. Oh, yes. Finally, you have <laughs> Spider and Chan with some, uh, Fake sumo bellies about to, well, sumo wrestle. While watching sumo as well, and Yelena with Yelena cheering. Sumo is the most perfect of sports. It has elegance, ceremony, danger, art, speed, and most important, two fat bastards smacking the shit out of each other. It is immaculate, which is why it has remained essentially unchanged for thousands of years. It remains the only thing in the world that I want to see stay static. The only thing I love that loves me back. Next, we have a guy standing in front of... I'm not sure if it's supposed to be a, an engraving on the wall behind him or just Im imagined images of uh, some of the older gods. Zeus, Odin. Well, actually, I think I'm maybe also the Christian god in the middle, but yeah. He met God in the night, walking to his hotel in the, in the rain, like he was... Written by Hemingway, sipping slowly through a place where nurses die if you kiss them and syphilis steals your friends the minute you look away. God stopped and talked to him for a while, quiet, solemn words in the heart of the dark. And then, by a central street station, God sat down and wept. He, the gave told me, the suffers from the na naivete trait that parents thought were cute 20 years ago. He has a pre-civilization neural connectivity, where we have in instincts that, no, you shouldn't cross the road. He hallucinates God, telling him not to cross the road. I've heard that naivete trade is getting trendy again. You're thinking about it. Think about the boy weeping uncontrollably as God cries for him not to cross the street. Then we've got a snippet of one or of a column. The picture, is, the picture shown here is Spider at a uh, <clears throat> a memorial for the late Dr. Vita Severn. I've got a data miner running. It's comparing missing persons against personality traits in domestic situations. The person who killed Vita Severn was so thoughtfully vaporized that no evidence whatsoever, whatsoever remained. Apart from the gun, which was sanitized. Once I've got a spread of names, I can have questions asked. I can cover the story. No one's getting away with this. The new president has promised to fuck me over. But if I can manage this, I can get him first. If. I've been getting headaches lately. This one is actually listed as being not for publication. There's a, a bit about the internal strife in Ludgate East, which just finally burned itself out. It burned itself out a couple of years back. Everyone thought the bomb died in this room just rot, since there was no way Civic Center was going to send cash. No one figured on the assholes, though. The tourist assholes came for a holiday in someone else's misery. In their retro Viet Cong black pajamas and urban camo dresses, here to see what an actual war looks like. And they're able to smile and say, Hi, I'm Marcellus the 30th, I'll be your guide for today, selling toy ram cars made from spent shells. We got a shot of Spider 
shooting at a, shooting a TV. So this corp wants wants to show me they love me like like unto a god by giving me a new new for fuck's sake television set, Proximedia they call it. Rider signals on the regular digital feed talk to a small maker inside the set, which pumps out olfactory mix and force feed waves. You can see TV, hear it, and now smell it, taste it, and feel it. I'm sad to report that it will not be a hit, and that applying it to remastered old films was not clever. Despite the possibilities, I found I found myself groped by Vincent Price, forced to taste divine, and attacked by the special scent of several unwashed porn stars being intimate with donkeys. <laughs> and my fil filthy assistants were all licked by worn oats. Then leads us to uh, Spider looking out at the city from terrible goddamn place. Some days it's like some bastard nailed a ticket for the bus tour down to fucking hell to the front of my brain. For every every wild everything depends on it. First week of being madly lo loved, kissed on a street corner. For every beautiful woman stopping to feel the sun on her face, and every child dancing in clean rain. There's a kid living in his own shit in a dumpster somewhere while daddy sells his ass for milk money. Tanks breaking down unwanted houses just to stop homeless people squatting there. Time was this place didn't make sense and I could have lived with I could have lived with it. Either that's changed or I have. There's all the good thing there's all the good things on this ticket, and pure fucking evil too. And all the same, I'm going down with you. It's where the issue ends. Which brings us to monstering. Issue begins with Spider, Yelena, and Shannon pass out on the couch with the cat resting on Spider's lap. Spider wakes up first and promptly vomits. Wipes, himself, wipes his mouth on the cat and tosses it over the, chat, over the back of the couch. And apparently, they were uh, watching older movies and all passed out together. Delaney goes to shower while Shannon go goes to use the toilet. And Spider has to be informed. Turns out, the Senator Tarleton Sweeney, who provides single service to the streets of the Vicarage, of Vicarage for 15 years, is being accused of covert, covert funding of uh, porn films, cash for filler buster, and other un, undeclared earnings and gifts this morning. And so Spider decides that today he and the filthy assistants are going monstering. It's a final journalistic arc, like Kung Fu. It's the art of abusing people, of ambushing them with questions, following them with questions, hounding them with questions, driving them to their graves with questions. It's sort of like being a photographer, because we've never, act, we've never yet killed any royalty doing it. Yet. Good, thing to, good things come to those who wait. And so, at the senator's home, the press were there ready for his statement. And suddenly... Some odd questions are suddenly raised. The distinguished pe features of uh, the senator, the senator's penis, for example. Including whether or not there's a joint or not. And then the crowd parts, and Sweeney gets mad and starts to wade into it, and only to reveal Spider and his filthy assistants. And so Jerusalem's interrogate Spider's Jerusalem, Spider's interrogation of Sweeney becomes news, and Spider decides that they have to crank their, crank everything up to, as he puts it, Wagnerian proportions. It 
turns out that uh, the senator's daughter is a transient. And there appears, and of course, Spider-Man gets get a means of continuing to pester the senator into the car with him. Asking him when he stopped having sex with his wife. Shannon is, of course, is adding additional uh, fire to other, to other sources. And um, the senator gets asked that on television, actually, when did he stop having sex with his wife? And does that have any bearing on his alleged porn business? Porn business? And yes, it's still following the senator. Over dinner, Spider and the assistants basically, Spider goes over with the assistants with their, their next move and what they're going to do. So they go to, they go find a shady porn producer. A shady porn producer who was working with the senator and confirms that yes, the senator did make make movies with him. Oh, anyway, Spider turns out he's a new uh, gadget called a G reader. It reads genomes and hunts down rogue scrap genetic structure, that sort of thing. And the and the young girl clutching the producer's leg has scraps of of the senator's genome all all over her, as does the producer. Also, G readers are admissible in court. Apparently, there's been a press conference scheduled. So begins Lonely City. Lonely City is essay sponsored by Lonely City Television. Featuring it. By, and is uh, essays by Spider Jerusalem. So we see a group of guys walk by the billboard advertising Lonely City. They pull out a G-Rear. They look at a guy at a bus stop and promptly beat him to death on the sidewalk. The next morning it's on the news, referred to as a G-Rear killing. However, Civic Center is the CPD are leaking case details, and they expect to have a built-up picture of the killing and the case approach by tomorrow morning. And so they go to hit the street. They go to the crime scene. Spider talks to the lead uh, detective, who. Even with his history with CPD, she actually does like what he does. And she will admit that the police have not done well by him. And she wants to change that. And so he asks questions. He asks questions. The most important one being 
why is the police department sitting on the, the surveillance tapes? The detective, Detective Newton, informs Spider that they're playing they're playing this carefully. Spider explains that uh, this says to her that the PD ought to be doing is everything short of putting a bounty on the on the killers. So they leave. Spider phones Royce. Explains that he's working on it. He's working on his column and it's gonna be out to kill him. Cops have made no arrests. They're going to make the killing go away. And Roy straight up asks him if he really, if Spider really wants to to mess the fuck with CP with the city police department again. And he, but she responds, and right now, he's in the mood to fuck with anyone. Looks at him funny. Which brings us to part two. Spider awakes from a dream. By the cat pouncing on his head and scratching the fuck out of it. So they they learn about a uh, where where the, uh, the the killers have been arrested and they're being held at Dante Street Precinct House. So they head down there. As they make their... Shortly after their cab enters the, the Dante Street Precinct area... Well, funnily enough... Corbin's got to start going up. But Shannon sees something she doesn't like like the look of the street the street cordon is clear is it's obvious and so rather than try and actually get the story spider decides it's time for him and his filthy assistants to leave then Shannon looks and sees what's going on apparently yes the killers have been arrested and promptly released on bail. Out on bail, released out the front door in front of a mob, armed cops, sealed area. Channon and Spider get weapons at the ready. Yelena didn't bring any. And run. The mother of the victim shouts at the, at the killers. And the four start wading into the crowd. They get to the end of to the cordon as we let out. We're not part of what's going on there. And they're told no one gets out of the entire block. Orders are very clear. Yelena tries to reason with the officer. He simply says, I'm sorry, miss. Next time, get a better job. And a better boss. Spider's asked what's going on, but but by Yelena, and he says that there's going to be a riot, and the cops are going to let it happen. It's not. It's not a riot. It's a massacre. Everyone there mowed down. Except for the released, the bailed out killers. Spider realizes what's happened. They turn the street into a kill zone and he and the assistants walk right into it. So Spider has Yelena call Royce, ask for, for a complete set of the tapes on the killing. And he wants, and Spider now really wants to know what they're covering up. They continue to make their way, try to make their way out of the, 
the area. Two more cops, riot cops, try to stop them, and at the very least, Shannon assaults them with a stun baton. They manage to get out of the way, out, out of public view for a moment, when Royce finally tells Yelena just what it is that they discover on the tapes. You put all, when all the tapes were put together, a police patrol car is parked 100 yards from, down the road from the bus stop where the guy, where the victim was killed, with three cops in it, watching. Spider tells Yelena to keep Royce on the line. It has to do a, a search engine check on public graffiti site cameras in the area. And Royce does manage to pass along some intel. Shannon gets her stun baton ready and t tells Spider and Yelena that the, the signal is run like fucking com commit assault on a police officer several times. And the signal of that that is the signal for running like fucking committing assault on police officer on a police officer several times. And so that's exactly what they do. Yelena tosses a stun baton into the police car. The other officer in the car gets shot by Spider's bowel disruptor, and they end up face to face with Detective Newton. Shannon makes it perfectly clear that if Newton shoots Spider, she dies next. Newton holsters her weapon and tells Spider that her back was turned slightly too long to see or catch him. It's the Death Sergeant's fault for detailing her there because he'd run out of warm bodies, which is why, his back, which is why her back was turned. Running, running her caseload by phone. She explains the patrol cars with a specific a specified EMP burst that should knock out the cameras in the vicinity, ought to wipe their memories and buffers too. The, guy, the officers in the in the car should have used the night Lockwood got killed. The, the victim of the of the killing in, earlier in the story. Instead of playing with the G reader, newly installed in all part patrol vehicles. Newton then tells Spider and the assistants to get out of there and go write a story and leave her out of it. Spider has some drink. Some drinks made for the uh, assistants and a shot of bourbon made for himself, which he promptly drinks before destroying the glass. He then, he's apparently shaking, shaking so hard he has to use two hands to hold his cigarette lighter steady when he goes out onto the balcony to write his column. It's been a while since anyone tried to kill me. A little less than two hours ago, CPD tried to silence the critics of their handling of the Lockwood case in a fairly original manner. They rounded them up and shot them. At this point, I have no idea how many casualties there are. I don't have time for that. Because you need to know, now, that CPD have finally come unglued. They cannot survive this unglue. Or they cannot survive this act of ultimate brutality. We cannot let them survive it. That's where, how this column begins. The, uh... What happened at Dante Street has hit the news. It stated that an attempt was made at storming the precinct house. The police fell in siege procedure at the time. There was a shot from the crowd and no one survived the riot.
Royce then calls, and of course, Spider Fury keeps calling and asks what to call him. He says, I, I, hey, I just sent it to you. However, the White Houses hit the word, or at least Spider's call, specific call, that specific column by Spider, with what's referred to as a D notice. Stories considered dangerous to local and national security and international standing can and will be spiked by the Callahan administration. And that's exactly what they did to Spider's column. As they, they can't run it because they're legally constrained from doing so. This, of course, makes Spider mad to no end. He then tells the assistants that the next day, take his credit cards and buy weapons. Never go anywhere unarmed again. And he then explains that, the sm that Callahan banned the column. The only piece of the news that actually said what happened on Dante Street, and he had it killed. Because, and that, that's when Spider realizes that Callahan knew they were there, and knew that their bodies weren't found. He realizes also that this is the start of something disgusting. And reiterates, get guns, and then goes outside, stand in the rain, smoke and be and potentially cry, I would guess, with the way he's hunched over at the balcony. And that is where volume five ends. And that's it for today's video. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. We'll be back tomorrow with a, with the weekly comic book roundup. Um Links to my Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, and PayPal can be found in the description box down below. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off saying, live long, rock hard, and be safe, everyone.